Today I want to talk about the most important weapons that you should be taking with you into the final shape for the day one raid. This is a pretty early list and it's definitely possible that the meta could change before the final shape drops. However, obviously it does take some time to get the weapons, which is why you might want to know a farther ahead of time. There's not really anything else to do right now, so let's go ahead and get into it and look at some of the most important weapons for the day one raid. So we are going to set up three main categories here in the form of ag clear weapons, DPS weapons, and general use and utility weapons. So starting things off, we'll have a look at the best ag clear weapons right now. It's important to remember that we're going to have a different relic than we do right now, so I'm going to be focusing on weapons that are good regardless of the relic. So stuff like Polaris Lance aren't going to be as important. As far as primaries go, you're pretty much looking at Sunshot and Trinity Ghoul as the best primary ag clear options. If you want to make ammo for your team using heavy ammo finder mods, I highly recommend them. If you really need something in the kinetic slot, you could use Osteostriga, however the other two are definitely better choices, so I would try to use them if you can. As for legendary options, we've got some really obvious picks in the form of Forbearance and Fivebearance, the newer version. Which one you want to tank is kind of up to preference, but if you already have the Forbearance crafted, you really don't need to go out of your way to get a Fivebearance, it's not adding too much. I have a full video comparing them if you do want to see that, and I'll leave a link in the description below. As for the kinetic slot, we have the recent Tusk of the Boar. While I think that Forbearance is still kind of stronger overall, the Tusk of the Boar has a couple of advantages, and again is in the kinetic slot, so if you need something else in your energy weapon, then this is the go-to. The perks that people like on it are pretty much Slideways or Slice in the third column, it's kind of just preference what you like more. I like Slideways more, but some people like Slice. And then the choice between Chain Reaction and Deconstruct. I think for a day one raid, Deconstruct is probably at its highest potential, just because a lot of adds won't be one-shotted by a wave frame sometimes. And if you have three enemies stacked up, you could just get a follow-up shot instantly. Otherwise, Chain Reaction is always a great perk, and it is going to be nerfed in Final Shape, but I still think it's just going to be one of the best perks on Grenade Launchers, so... That's really it when it comes to super effective weapons for Ag Clear. Obviously, you also have abilities, which I think are more of a go-to when it comes to Ag Clear. Even simple stuff like just using the snap itself with Heat Rises on Warlock is super potent for a very minimal build. However, obviously stuff like Sun Bracers and spamming Grapple Melees on other classes or the Punch Build on Hunter, things like that, very effective Ag Clear. Especially with Prismatic, the Punch Build is going to be very strong on Hunter. If you want to see me break down what I think Prismatic is going to do in the future, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about it. So moving on to the DPS weapons, this is where things get a lot more interesting. The main competition is going to be between grenade launchers and rocket launchers when it comes to the heavy weapons. And as it sits right now, they're actually both very powerful options. We really are in one of the most diverse DPS metas we've ever seen in the game. If you are a team that's probably going to lean more into rockets, and you're going to have a galley and all that, highly recommend Apex Predator. I mean, that name's been thrown around everywhere, everybody knows what that is. That's the uh, rocket launcher from Last Wish. It's very strong, you just get the reconstruction and bait and switch roll, it's super versatile, it works in a lot of situations, and it does a ton of damage. It's meant to be used in rotations with stuff like Izanagi's or other weapons, so I recommend looking into those if you're not familiar. It's called Izanagi swapping, it's a very well-known thing that you can find all over the place. As for grenade launchers, we've pretty much got the choice between Caraxes's Cataphract, and Edge Transit. I think that if we're surrounded, Caraxes's will be a very strong pick, but if you're not, Edge Transit will likely be the go-to. I also think that Envious is a little bit more of a questionable perk in a day one raid. It's much more common to die, and that would make you lose all of your stacks. So for Caraxes's, you might even want to use Reconstruction instead. And on Edge Transit, obviously you can use Cascade Point instead of that and use your own reload perks with stuff like Rain of Fire or Grapple Reloads. If you have a Titan on the team, I would just make them be Tractor. Uh, they're, they're not very good at weapon damage right now. And Tractor is a great way to contribute to the team and not need much of a build to add to it. Those are the heavy weapons covered, but let's go ahead and have a look at the special weapons. Every good DPS setup typically involves at least two weapons. I mentioned earlier Izanagi swapping, make sure you have Izanagi's Burden, it is one of the most powerful swap and burst DPS weapons in the game. It pretty much has been in the meta ever since it was released, all the way back in Forsaken over four years ago. A few other great options are Merciless as another exotic in the energy slot. As for some legendaries, I recommend having good fusion snipers and shotguns depending on your loadout, especially the Akello sniper, the Supremacy. 
the scatter signal and the Cartesian coordinate, the Imperial Decree, and maybe the Ikelos shotgun. There's plenty more examples, however, those are some very great things to start from. And moving on into the sort of utility and general good stuff, this is probably going to be the biggest list of weapons, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, an Eager Edge Sword, very obvious, you're going to want one. Remember in Final Shape, the Falling Guillotine and the Slammer are going to be able to have Enhanced Eager Edge, so these are going to be the technical best, but the old ones are still very good, just make sure you have one in case you have something where you need to get around quickly in. While Galahorn is good in DPS settings, it's also a very good general weapon. Galahorn can round up pretty much any loadout because it can take out huge groups of adds, as well as destroying majors and even the weaker bosses. Galahorn is also very good, especially if you're using a Cenotaph setup on the team where you've got people producing ammo all the time. It really is one of the most effective ways to clear adds in the game. Another one is Indebted Kindness. It's got very good major clear. And on the topic of major clear, also Mountaintop, which is also movement. If we end up with something that we need to go up very quickly, Mountaintop may be able to solve that really quickly. Definitely keep a Mountaintop on hand at least for movement, but if you have a good roll for Major Clear, it is very effective Major Clear. My recommendation is Overflow with Recombination. Some would take Auto Loading Holster, and if you prefer that, go for it. But as far as Major Clear goes, I definitely prefer Overflow, just because a lot of the times it doesn't quite one-shot, and you really just want a quick follow-up shot, and Auto Loading Holster really flops at providing that. Having a follow-up shot was one of the great benefits behind Heritage. If you didn't one-shot with the first shot, you could just shoot another pretty quickly. But without having Overflow, Mountaintop's not able to do that. And remember, when it is enhanceable, you'll be able to get a third shot in the tube, instead of just the two that you can currently have. Having one player with Divinity on the team might be important in case we have something you need to crit that is hard to hit. I also highly recommend having some shoot-to-loot weapons around, either trace rifles, maybe SMGs if you really want a primary. Great choices are the Retraced Path from Dares or the World Drop Parabellum, but if you're not lucky with the Parabellum, you could also craft the Subjunctive. You might also want to carry a Blinding Grenade Launcher. If you really want to be prepared, make sure you have one in both slots. There's a lot of good options, like Empty Vessel and Truth Teller for the Energy, or the Ignition Code and the Pardon Our Dust for the Kinetic Slot. Ignition Code is really hard to get now, so just get Pardon Your Dust if you don't already have one. It's really not worth it. I also highly recommend getting a Vorpal Weapon Secession. You can get that from the Brave Arsenal, or you can just get a good one from the Deepstone Crypt Raid and craft it too. The reason you might want this is for higher health crit objectives. You might need a high impact frame sniper to one shot it, because a rapid fire frame won't one shot it, which would make this better for clearing that objective. Supremacy still is way better as far as DPS goes. And lastly, make sure you have good weapons for clearing champions. On contest mode, remember things are a lot harder, and you might not be able to just insta-burst down the champions like you can in normal raids. The champion weapons are going to change based on the artifact, however in general, Explosive Payload is a very strong champion perk, and when it comes to barrier, Adaptive Munitions is extremely powerful. That being said, it's not that important to specialize the weapon perks towards that, and there are a lot of weapons that have their own intrinsic things like Malfeasance. Because there's so many different options for champs, I'm not going to look into any specific ones, but just make sure you have some in mind on a sort of checklist for yourself what you want to use. Anyway, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you learned something and that this helped you out, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye